to get started, what we're going to do is look at several different types of uh, ND filters. Let's talk about what an ND filter is actually used for. Understand that neutral density or ND filter is used to knock light down. In other words, if the light is very intense, what we're going to want to be able to do is actually knock that light down so that we can either slow our shutter speed down or decrease our actual um, shooting time either through our shutter speed or through our f-stop. Now understand that each ND filter is, um, has a different intensity. It has a different level of darkness. So it's going to knock light down at different levels depending on what you're trying to accomplish. For instance, if you were shooting a waterfall and you wanted to do a two minute exposure and it's in the middle of the day, you're going to want to knock that light down even further so that you can slow that shutter speed down to get that nice milky feel to the water. So let's start by looking at a very basic filter and that is this filter here. Now this is simply um, a UV filter and I recommend that everyone that has a camera and a lens has a UV filter attached to it. This is more of a protection but it's also going to help reduce the ultraviolet light that is emitted uh, by everything that sees the sunlight and it's going to knock that down and help your images to be cleaner. Okay, The next filter which is actually a polarizer. Now a polarizer shouldn't be um, mistaken as an ND filter. Yes, it will knock the light down about a stop to two stops depending on how you actually dial it. On this filter, whenever you attach it to your camera, essentially what you'll do is just turn this and as you turn it, it gets a little bit darker. But what this is really used for is to knock reflections down, say, in glass or on water. Now, it's a good thing to always use a polarizer in conjunction with your UV filter. In other words, your UV filter is going to stay on your lens no matter what and then you add filters to that. Now in this particular scenario what it is is simply the it's called a CPL or a polarizer, a circular polarizer. And you, what you want for all DSLRs is a circular polarizer. You do not want to use a linear polarizer. Okay? Now circular obviously means that as you turn it, it's going to continue to uh, get darker. Okay, So what that's going to do is uh, knock down reflections and, and specular highlights and glares and things of that nature. Now, these two filters, even though we're talking about neutral density, they play in, uh, in conjunction with the neutral density filter. In a lot of cases, you may stack an ND2, for instance, like this one, with a, a polarizer just to knock the light down more. Or you might stack the ND2 with your UV, knocking the UV down and then knocking the light down even further. You can go even one step further and go to a 4, a 6, or in this case um, an 8 ND, which you can see right here is much darker. And if you look at the, the density of the image, or excuse me, the density of the filter, how this one's a little lighter than this one, you can see that the number six is going to knock the light down even further. Okay? Now, circular ND filters work great as a standard. And there's many cases where I'm out shooting and I want to be able to control the actual intensity of, say, the sky only and not the whole image. And that's where a graduated ND filter is going to come into play. At this point, I want to introduce another circular ND filter, the graduated ND filter. Now, as you can see, this is a circular. This is one that actually fits right onto your lens, just like your ND filters and your UV filters. Now, there's advantages to using an ND filter like this, but there's also advantages in using the flat plexiglass ND filter. Now, in most cases, this uh, ND filter will work great. The problem with this is, is when you attach this actually to your lens, what happens is, is you're required to uh, use the ND graduation that's actually on the filter itself. The difference between the circular and the flat is that with this filter, you can actually 
um, control the amount of, of, of gradation. In other words, you're using a bracket like this, and this is a Koken bracket and a Koken filter. And what this allows you to do is attach this directly to your lens. And if you'll notice here, this has a little bracket on the inside. And you simply just pop this out, and this will come in different sizes depending on your lens. So you can replace this bracket right here for the type of lens that you use. And then, of course, this filter, as you can see, is graduated. You can actually um, control the amount of graduation just by simply sliding it into the slot and then of course imagine your lens here and then you can slide it down and the further you slide it the darker the graduation is going to be. So you have more control there with an ND filter like this. There's lots of situations where an ND filter like this, a graduated ND, is going to come into play uh, much better than a circular or a fixed ND, graduated ND filter. Now, these NDs are different than the graduated. They work the same way. They knock light down. Just like with your graduated, if you wanted to knock the sky down and give it more, make it more dramatic, or maybe it's a really bright sky and you just want to add some tone to it, that's where something like this will come in. These ND filters are more for knocking the overall light of the scene down. Okay? Now, like these are individual where you can actually stack them on top of each other. For instance, if you had a 2 and a 6, you would end up with an 8. If you had a 2, 4, and an 8, you'd end up with a 12, and so on and so forth. Or, excuse me, a 2, 4, and an 8, you would end up with a 14 um, ND filter. Or a 2, 4, and a 6, you're going to end up with a 10 ND. So the whole idea is is choose your ND filters based on the scene and what you want to accomplish. Now our next ND filter or um, it's called a fader all right, which is this one here and it actually works just like these ND filters except it's a solid um, you know circular filter and I'm going to show you here how it works as you dial it it gets brighter and as you dial it uh, the other direction it's going to get darker and as you can see we can take it all the way down where it's almost completely black. Now this is called a fader all right? and the fader works really well because you can determine how much of an ND that you're going to need and you're not going to have multiple filters. Now let's talk about cost for a second. Each one of these ND filters are going to run about thirty to forty dollars. This one filter which comprises from a 2 ND to a 400 ND is going to run about $120 for one filter. Now the benefits there are, are pretty obvious. You're not packing in your camera case multiple filters. You're only working with one. But it is very expensive. So if you drop it and break it, it's expensive to replace unlike if you dropped one filter and had to replace it. So the idea here is, um, is to compress what you're carrying with you to accomplish the same thing. And what I've found in a lot of cases is the fader ND will actually um, create color shifts in your image so you have to be careful as to how much you actually use it. And then of course the graduated NDs and the standard NDs all come in different color combinations. For instance, you could get a orange graduated ND, a blue, uh, an amber color, a yellow. There's all different colors, green, red, and so on and so forth. So, as you can see, there is a lot of uses for ND filters and graduated ND filters. What you have to decide is what type of filter you need for the scenario that you're shooting in. If you want to knock light down, the full ND filters are your best choice. If you want to knock just a portion of the shot down, the sky, a specular highlight, um, a street lamp or something of that nature, the graduated ND is going to be your best choice. So it really depends on which way you want to go with your image and how you want to use the ND filter. Thanks for joining me for this video tutorial and I look forward to our next.